For lab two, we are going to demonstrate how to back up the MojoDrive parameters, factory reset them, and how to reset a fault if it occurs. When working with the parameters, there are some things I want to point out. If you have an existing movie drive that has already been commissioned, it's best to back up the parameters one more time before making any changes. This is necessary so if you need to revert back to the original state, you have a parameter file with those settings. It will be much easier to download a previous parameter file than trying to undo the changes that were made one by one. There are a couple more ways the Motion Studio software can back up the inverter parameters, and I will show you both methods. If you're ever talking with someone that's helping troubleshoot the machine, they may ask for a copy of the parameter file. These files are small enough to be emailed easily, and I will show you how to locate the parameter file in your project folder. In some instances, we have to factory reset the inverter parameters. The reason we may want to do this is when a parameter file is corrupted and we need to start over, or if we are troubleshooting and want to make sure the inverter settings are at its default before we re-download the parameter backup. We can do that by going to parameter 802. This parameter is a drop down menu and it will have two levels available. The one that I use is the delivery state, which is a complete reset of all the parameters. Another option is the standard reset, which resets everything except the motor parameters and the performance tuning associated with it. As soon as you select a reset option, it will happen immediately. Before you do this, you have to make sure you have a good parameter backup because there is no option to stop or undo the reset if you accidentally select this parameter and make a change. If the movie drive experiences a fault, those faults will fall into two different categories. A fault such as an F08 speed monitoring fault would be a critical fault that would disable the inverter from restarting until the fault is rectified and cleared with a fault reset from the parameter tree or from the PLC. The other category are warnings. In some cases, warnings don't need a fault reset signal to be sent to restart the inverter. For instance, a field bus timeout will display a flashing fault code on the inverter when it's no longer communicating over the network, but as soon as the network is reestablished, the inverter will clear the warning and restart automatically. In either case, the seven segment display is a helpful tool to look at to determine what state the inverter is currently in. Here's a list of some of the common states you will see on the inverter display. The zero means that it's only powered with 24 volts and it's not detecting any high voltage supply. The one means the inverter is inhibited, which means it can't operate until the inhibit state is cleared. Two means the inhibit state is cleared, but it's waiting on an enable signal from the terminals or from the field bus. It's possible to have a holding current going to the motor in this state, so as soon as the enable is given, the motor will start running. Four and five mean the inverter is enabled with a speed control mode, either without encoder feedback or with it. The capital letter A means that the inverter is enabled by an application module or custom IPOS program, and it's cycling through the program commands. This is very common when the movie drive is used in positioning applications. It's also possible that the inverter will show an A status and the motor won't be moving. This happens when the inverter is left enabled, but the set point position hasn't changed, so the motor drive is waiting for the next command. Lastly, the capital letter U means that the safe torque off circuit is tripped. This is often controlled by a functional safety circuit, so the inverter is still powered, but its ability to enable the motor is disabled when you see the U status. As soon as the safe torque off control circuit gets its voltage back, the inverter can enable. If the inverter is displaying a fault, you can learn more about the conditions when the fault occurred by going into the parameter tree. The fault histories are found in folder zero display values, and then in the subfolder 08 fault memory zero through four. Memory zero is the most recent fault memory, and memory four is the least recent. 
If the Mobi drive continues to fault, the history will move down the list one number as more faults are recorded. So what was stored in memory zero gets moved to memory one, then one to memory two, and so forth. And the data in memory four is gone once another fault occurs. The Motion Studio software has an easier way to display the current status of each inverter you're connected to. At the bottom right of the software window is an icon for the online unit status. When you click on this icon, a window will pop up where you can scan for the statuses of your inverter. The window automatically hides when your mouse moves off of it, so if you need to leave it up while you use other tools in the Motion Studio software, you can click this pin icon so it stays visible. Beside each inverter in the list will be a reset button. This reset button should not be confused with a parameter reset. This button does not delete any parameters, but only resets the current fault condition. This is an alternative way of resetting the inverter's current fault code. The other methods to reset the current fault code are by power cycling the inverter, finding the fault reset parameter in the parameter tree, or sending the reset command from the PLC. I do want to mention a warning about resetting faults on the Mobi drive. If the enable and the set points are still active on the inverter, it can restart its operation without warning once the fault is cleared. So you do have to be extremely careful when you are troubleshooting faults. You should always follow your lockout and tagout procedures for shutting the machine down when diagnosing a fault. Just because the inverter has been stopped due to a fault, it is not safe to enter the machine area because that motor could restart without warning if the fault is rectified automatically or if the reset command is sent to the inverter. Let's head back into the Motion Studio software and demonstrate these things. All right, we're back in the software, and the first thing I want to show you is how to do a parameter backup. So we're going to simulate that this Movi drive has already been commissioned and running and that there are currently no issues with it. If you look at the seven segment display, you can actually see there's an IPOS program running because that red decimal light in the bottom right hand corner is currently blinking. Now the drive is currently inhibited, so that is why it shows a number one status on the seven segment display. So let's say that we want to back up these correct parameters to make sure that if we ever need to troubleshoot this in the future, we have a good parameter backup since this is currently working without any issues. There are two different methods to do this, so let me show you both right now. The first method you'd want to do is if you want to keep control of your parameter file separate from your Motion Studio project folder. So the first thing you need to do is select your movie drive, and then you want to right click on it, and then to do the parameter backup, so that way you have control of the parameter file and it's separate from your Motion Studio project, you would need to come to the item startup. This is also the same menu where you get into your parameter tree, but instead of going to the parameter tree, we want to go to this first item at the very top that is called data management. So we're going to click on this. The center of our Motion Studio screen is going to change, and you have two options. You have a download, which says it goes from the PC to the unit, or you have an upload that says unit to the PC. If we want to back up the parameters to our computer as a separate file, which one do you think we need to choose? If you think we need to click the upload button, you'd be correct. We want to take the file from the unit and upload it to the PC to store as a file on the PC. So what I'm going to do is click on the upload button. It's going to give me a Windows Explorer pop-up to choose where I want to store this file. It defaulted to my desktop, so I'm just going to say that's okay, and I'm going to give it a descriptive name. I will call it MDX Positioning Revision 1, and then just click Save. It takes a second to do this process. You can also do this while it's running. The machine doesn't have to be stopped to do the parameter backup. And then once the parameter backup is complete, you will see that both sides turn green. If you are paying attention to the background in my desktop, you may have noticed that this file populated that was the same name that I gave the parameter file. It's called MDX Positioning Rev 1. If you double click on this file, 
it will open to this var data interpreter. Now the var data interpreter is not very graphical. If I wanted to look at my parameter file to see what the parameter settings are, I would come into this item that is called parameters. And then you can see that each parameter is assigned an index number. And then if you needed to look at the individual parameter, you would have to know your individual three digit parameter number. So that could be found right here before the text of the parameter. And you have to scroll through this long list and try to find your three digit parameter number and then your value that it's set to would be off to the right. Now this can be a little bit hard to interpret sometimes because it can be set as a hexadecimal value or a scaled value and it may not make very much sense to you, but it is an easy way to look quickly at some parameters. The other method would be just to open up your Motion Studio project and then look at it through the parameter tree, which would show the normal scaling and then it would be easy to read. So what I'm going to do is close this var data interpreter. Now this file on your desktop is very important and you wanna make sure that you do not delete this file or change the extension. You're free to change the name, but make sure you do not change it from the VD0 extension or delete this file if this happens to be the only backup you have. All right, so that's one way to back up the printers is controlling the file outside of your Motion Studio project. But let's say we want to keep this project complete and then have all of our devices backed up to our project folder. So that way, if we come into this project folder, we can double click into it and actually get to our printer file that way. And as long as we keep track of this folder, then we will also have a track of our printer files. So let me show you how to do that. I will close this data management tool by clicking on the little X underneath the SCW EuroDrive logo. The big X at the top will close the whole software suite, which you don't want to do that. So we're just going to click this little one. It's going to close that tab. And then now if I want to back this up to the project, I'm going to make this MDX positioning, which is the name of the Moby Drive, appear in this top box. Now I haven't explained this to you, but the bottom box on the left is for working directly online with the unit, either over ethernet or serial or some other type of connection to the inverter. The box at the top is only for offline units. So if I wanted to go offline by clicking this red plug and then look at the parameters for everything I have backed up, any device that I have backed up to my project will show up in this project box in the top. If I don't have anything backed up to my project, then it will be blank just like it shows right now. So let me go back online so I can back up these parameters. Now, if you want to back up your online device to your offline project folder, you will need to go to your network connection. So I'm currently connected over ethernet. So I'm going to select ethernet. Then I'm going to right click on this node to get the menu for it. Then I'll have this option that says configure devices that are connected over ethernet. Now, say for instance, I had an ethernet connection and a serial connection to my devices and I wanted to back up everything, then I would want to go to the network node at the top and then right click on it and then say configure all devices. This is the same menu item, but depending on where I click, it's going to either back up everything it sees on the network or just everything that it sees on ethernet. Since I'm currently only using ethernet, then I can just use this one right here that says configure devices over ethernet only. So I'm going to select this. It's going to give me a pop-up box telling me which device I have available online that I can back up. Currently, I'm only connected to one Mobi drive, so I only have one option. But if I had multiple Mobi drives or even multiple devices that Motion Studio can see, they would all be shown in this list, and I can have this checkbox to select or deselect them. This checkbox here that says accept signatures means that it's going to use the same online name, MDX positioning, as my offline project name. I'm going to leave that the same and not change it. So I'm going to leave this to accept signatures and units that are currently online. Now all I have to do is click the OK button. Depending on how many devices you have, it may take a minute to back up or just a few seconds. But once it's done, you'll see that both sides colors match. So now I will click OK. And then now you see that my online device name for this Mobi Drive MDX positioning is also backed up to my offline project. Now, if I want to look at these parameters when I'm not connected to the Mobi Drive, all I have to do is switch to offline mode. So I'll click this red plug in the top. And then now I need to make sure I'm 
doing any of my selections inside the top box because that is the offline mode not the online mode there's no point for me to be down here anymore because i'm not currently connected to anything i only want to be using the menu options that are up top and if i right click on mdx positioning that's the offline project file you can see that i get almost the same menu options that i would get if i was online now i'm not going to have an option to do data management in offline mode because i'm currently not connected to it but you can see that I can also click into the parameter tree and then also look through any of the parameters that were backed up. Now, I do want to mention that when you look through the parameter backup, you need to exercise caution because it is possible to accidentally make a parameter change that would overwrite your backup. So, for example, if I open up folder one and then come into item 10, and then let's just change parameter 101 from terminals to field bus. If you look over to the left, you'll now see a red square beside the MobyDrive icon. And if I hover my mouse over this icon, you can see that the last dash of this pop-up box says that the unit data was changed in offline memory. So what that means is Motion Studio has recognized I have changed a parameter. And then if I go to close this Motion Studio project and then save it when it closes, it will actually overwrite the parameter backup that I have. That can be a problem if I'm only keeping the parameter backup in my project and not somewhere else. This is a way that the parameter file can end up being corrupted accidentally. So you do need to be careful when navigating your parameters in offline mode because changes that you make in offline mode do affect the offline parameters. Now, if you're ever in offline mode and you're navigating the parameter backup and you notice the square here saying that a parameter was changed, and you're not sure what was changed, all you have to do is just close Motion Studio. You'll see this pop-up that says, do you want to save the changes? Make sure you click no, and then it will not overwrite that parameter backup. And this is a way of undoing that change if you have not yet saved the Motion Studio project. If you have already saved the Motion Studio project, then that parameter file has already been overwritten with the change. At that point, you would need to re-back up your parameters from your online device if it is still a good parameter set in your online device. Now, since I know I only changed parameter 101, I can come back into the parameter tree and then just change it back to terminals and then save this project. And then now you see the red square goes away and I've now corrected the parameter file back to the way it was with terminals being set for parameter 101. Okay, let's close this parameter tree and then go back online by clicking the green plug in the top. Now I want to show you where this parameter file gets backed up to in the project folder. So if I click on my project folder on my desktop and open it, before we only had the Motion Studio launcher file, the views folder, and the user data folder. Now we have an additional folder called devices. If I double click into this, I will now have an additional folder with the same name as that device. So if I double click into that, I will now have the same parameter file that has the same extension of .vd0 as the one that was backed up directly to my desktop. These have different names, but they are the exact same parameter file and I just backed it up two different ways. Now these application data and user data folders may have something in there if you had an application or if you put something manually into these folders. So these aren't super important, but they are there if you are using them in specific scenarios. But currently I'm not using any of these, so there's no data inside of these folders, and that is completely fine. The really important file is this one right here that is this .vd0 extension for the MobiDrive parameter file. Now to go back, I can click the back button and you can see that this is the device name again. And this is my main Motion Studio project folder. And then that would be on the desktop. So if you want to ever share your Motion Studio project with someone, you have to zip this entire folder, not just send this launcher file, because you can see if I scroll to the right, that's only one kilobyte. That's just a launcher, a shortcut. It, it doesn't have any data in it that's useful. So you can either zip this entire folder and send it to somebody, and they will be able to open this launcher and then look at your project just as you had it last saved. Or you can come into the devices folder and then into each individual device and copy out these parameters and send that to someone that way as well too. Just make sure you do not delete this from the project 
Otherwise, it will corrupt the project, and then these links to the top box up here will no longer work. Another thing I want to note is, say for instance, I come into my online Movie Drive, and I make a change to the parameter online. So if I come into Startup, and then go to the parameter tree, now let me make a change to just one of the terminals, and say I want to reassign it to a different function. I'm just going to give it clockwise slash stop. And then if I close this, the change actually happened in the drive because I made it in the network box that's online in the bottom. So that change already happened in the movie drive. But if I switch to offline and then look at the parameters that I have backed up, you'll see that change did not replicate to my offline project. So you can see I on the previous version, I set DI04 to clockwise stop, but it's currently not stored in the backup file. This is an important thing to remember with Motion Studio that it does not keep your backup in sync with your online drives. You always have to upload any changes you make to your project manually every time if you want to keep your project in sync. So if that's the case and you want to make a change to your online device and update that to your project, what you want to do is make sure you're online and then scanned into your device. If the Motion Studio knows that's the same device, you'll see that it's still highlighted because it knows it's a matching device. And then you'd want to right click on Ethernet just like you did before, and then just say upload parameter sets all units to PC. It's going to give you the same selection again. Then I click OK. And now it's going to overwrite that file in my project with the change that I made online. Now I'll click OK, because it is now the same color on both sides, so it's complete and finished. Now if I go back offline, and then go back into the parameter tree for the offline file, you can now see that that parameter change that I made to the online unit is now backed up to my offline project. So just know if you do make any changes online and you want to keep your project in sync, you do have to do that manually. Motion Studio will not keep that in sync for you automatically. Now let's say that this drive is exhibiting faults and we're in a troubleshooting process and we need to factory reset this inverter and then reload the backup that we have for this inverter. So the way to do a factory reset is let's close these offline parameters. Now go back online, because I want to make this change online. Now I will right click in the bottom online box for the network, and then go to the parameter tree. And the factory reset is the parameter 802, so I will open up folder 8. Then go into item 80, and then now parameter 802 is the factory setting. Now if you remember, I said that this is a drop down menu. So as soon as you make a change, it's immediately happening in the drive as long as you're online and connected to the drive. So if I come to no, now you can see there's two options to do standard or delivery state. If you remember, standard deletes everything except the motor startup and its tuning, and then delivery state deletes everything. So if I select delivery state, as soon as I make this change, it's going to immediately start deleting everything in the Movie Drive. And you will see that the seven segment display will change from its current state of one to a number eight briefly while it's deleting everything and then recycling its processor. And then it should restart back up with one. So let's try this now. And I'm going to select delivery state. You can see the parameters went blank because it's currently not communicating anymore while the drive recycles itself. And then now you may not notice that the drive has lost its name as well. So what we need to do is actually close the parameter tree and then rescan Ethernet. And now it's going to say it's detected units in the network with changed properties. Do I want to update the network and delete what used to be there? And I'm going to say, yes, I want to do that. And then now you can see that it currently is an unnamed device and it's back to its factory setting. 
You can also look at the seven segment display and see that that blinking decimal light is no longer there because the IPOS program has been completely deleted because of the delivery state. Now, when you're doing a delivery state, the drive cannot be enabled or running, so it does have to be in some type of inhibit state or safe torque off for it to allow the delivery state to happen. Now, if you want to re-download parameters to a drive, it will also need to be inhibited or in a safe torque off state to be able to accept those parameters. You won't be able to do a parameter download while the drive is running. Now, if I want to download the backup from our project to this new drive that currently is default parameters, I can select the drive that is connected over Ethernet that I want to load those parameters to, right click on it, and then now I want to choose Assign Configured Unit, which all that means is it's going to show me a list of everything that I have backed up offline, and then it's gonna let me choose which one I want to download. So I'm gonna choose Assign Configured Unit. I currently only have one device backed up, so I'm gonna select that one and then click OK. It's going to give me a warning message to tell me, am I sure I want to load the offline data into this online device? And I'm going to say, yes, I want to do that. Now, if this backup had special communication parameters that I want to duplicate in this replacement inverter, I need to make sure I choose data transmission, including communication parameters, and then click yes. It's going to give me one last warning to tell me that it's going to load the offline parameters to this online device. And I'm going to say, yes, I want to do that. Now it notices that the name currently does not match. Is it sure that I want to overwrite that name? And I'm going to say, yes, I want to do that. Now it's loading the parameters to the downstream Moby Drive that I'm connected to online. Depending on how you're connected to the Moby Drive, either over a serial connection or over Ethernet, the time that it takes to download the parameters may vary, but it should happen within a few seconds or up to a minute. Now, once it's done, you can see that both colors match and it's finished, and I can click on OK. Now, if I rescan Ethernet just to make sure that this name stays the same, and then come back into this parameter tree. And let's look at that one parameter we changed that was the digital input assignment. So that's folder six, and then item 60. And then there it is right there, digital input zero for clockwise slash stop is that change we made right before we backed it up one last time. Now, what do you do if you don't have a backup in your project folder, but someone sent you a file that they just backed up to their computer like you see in the background on my desktop here. I'll show you how to download that file. So let's go ahead and factory reset this again. Now let's rescan our network to make sure it is different. Okay, I'm gonna update the network. And then now let's say we want to use this parameter file that is on my desktop to load into this new unit that we're connected to. So I'm going to select the unit that I want to load the parameter file to, right click on it. To re-download the parameters from the project backup, I chose assign configured unit. I don't wanna do that anymore since I am looking for a parameter file outside of my project. So I'm going to go back into the startup menu at the top and then select data management. This is the same tool that we used before to do the parameter upload to my desktop. When we did the parameter backup to the desktop, we chose this option to select upload, which takes the file from the inverter and stores it to the PC. So now we wanna do the opposite of that and take the file that's currently on our desktop and then download it to the inverter. So I'm going to choose this top option that says download from the PC to the unit. Then I get a Windows Explorer pop-up that lets me select a parameter file. Now it defaulted to my desktop since that's the last place I went with this tool to do the upload. But if it goes to the wrong location in Windows, then you can use your navigation bar on the left and then find the correct location in the folder 
where you have your parameter file stored. So I'm going to select this parameter that says MDX positioning rev one, and then click on open. As soon as I click on open, it starts downloading that parameter file to the inverter. Now we can see that the parameter download is complete because both colors match and the progress bar is done moving. So now all I need to do is just close the data management tool. And then rescan the Ethernet network to make sure that this device name updates. And yes, I do want to update the network. And we can see the name updated, but let me show you the parameter tree. When I backed up the file to my desktop, I had not made that change to the digital input. So if we inspect our digital inputs, we should see that DI04 is currently not set, and it's not. So that means that we used the file that was on my desktop, not in the project folder. Okay, that worked. Now let me demonstrate how to reset a fault if your movie drive is faulted and you're using the Motion Studio software. So what we can do is we can close this parameter since we're not using it anymore. And then now if you want to see the current status and any fault code on the inverter, you just click on the online unit status in the bottom right hand corner of the Motion Studio software. Then currently in the box that pops up, there is nothing showing up. So what you need to do is move your mouse into that area, then right click, then choose display all units. What it's going to do when I click that is look at anything that's shown up in my network and then add it to this box at the bottom. All right, now it found the one that was connected over ethernet. Here is the device name for the Mobi drive. It's currently in a status of inhibit and you can see that on the seven segment display being at a status of one and it's currently not faulted. So let me pin this so this window stays up because if I move my mouse off, you can see that the window drops away. So I want the window to stay up so I'm gonna click this pin icon to leave it up. Now let's cause the mode drive to fault and see what happens. Okay, we cause the mode drive to fault and it's showing an F8 fault speed monitoring. So let's say we don't know what the F08 fault means. We can determine what kind of conditions were surrounding that fault by looking in our fault history. So that's going to be in the parameter tree of your device. If you're not currently there, then all you need to do is right click on it, go to startup and then parameter tree. But you can see that I'm already in the parameter tree in the background. So I will go to folder zero display values. And then I will go down to fault memory zero through four and then open the plus icon for that. And if you remember fault memory zero is the most recent fault and fault memory four is the least recent. So if I click on fault memory four, you will see there's currently no fault for that. So I'm gonna close that. But if I go to memory zero, which should be the current fault that's displayed and double click on it, you can see that the fault code is eight. The description is speed monitoring. Now from experience, I know that the speed monitoring fault a lot of times relates to an overload of the output current of the movie drive. So if we look down in our history here, we can see the conditions recorded when the fault happened. The output current was presently at 25% when this speed monitoring fault occurred. Now to cause this drive to fault, I purposely reduced the current limit to an extremely low value. So let me correct that. That's going to be in folder three, motor parameters. Then item 30, limits one. And then the current limit is currently set to 2%. So the Mobi drive was pulling 25%, but my limit was set to 2%. So that's why it faulted is because we exceeded our current limit. So what I would need to do to make that not fault again would be to increase this current limit to something that's acceptable. I'll just say that 75% is acceptable and then click the enter button to accept that change. Then close that. Now, if I want to reset the fault, I can just click on this reset button right here beside speed monitoring.
We can see that it briefly disconnects from the Motion Studio software while the reset is happening. Now we're at no fault and the status of the inverter says inhibit. So now that I've changed the current limit parameter to 75%, we should not fault again. All right, the motor's running and we are not faulted. If we want to see what the present output current is while this motor is running, we can come into the display values parameter and then come into process values. So I'll double click on this. Let me close these windows so it doesn't get confusing. And you can see that just to run this motor with no load, it will take an output current percentage of 26%. I want to preface that in this example, I intentionally set the current limit too low so I could demonstrate how to reset a fault. In a real world scenario, if your Moby Drive is issuing a speed monitoring fault and you find that the Moby Drive is reaching the current limit, you shouldn't increase the parameter limit to stop the Moby Drive from faulting. Doing that could cause further damage to the machine, present a safety issue, or could cause permanent damage to the motor. You should instead go through your troubleshooting steps to find the root cause of why the Moby Drive is reaching its limit. All right, well, that was an overview of how to back up the parameters to your project and to your PC, how to set the parameters of the Moby Drive back to its delivery state condition, and then also how to re-download a parameter backup either from the Motion Studio project or from a backup file on your PC. In lab three, we will build upon what we've learned so far and continue exploring the MobiDrive parameter tree in more detail. Thank you for your attention. Have a good day.